Um, so CT, obviously, you start off with a plain film, and you now get you now are able to not get a single superimposed image. You have um, you have a tomographic representation across a single plane with multiple slices, and this is a high spatial resolution. Spatial resolution is a term we use in radiology to say that you're able to depict very small structures. Um, and you're able to see uh, bone particularly well, particularly cortical bone. Soft tissue, not as well, but certainly better than you would see on a, on a, on a plain film. Um, and again, you know, the, the good thing about CT is, again, widely available. Most of you will have a CT scanner available. Um, if not in your emergency room, immediately, mail, uh, immediately adjacent to the emergency room. Similarly, if not in the OR, immediately adjacent to the OR, probably. Um, and, and so this is very, you know, very accessible, very quick, has, has very few limitations as compared to, for example, MRI. Um, and, uh, and, you know, limitations, it's not, it's, it's not as good as MRI as, we, as, we'll, as we'll see in terms of soft tissue resolution. Um, and um, in terms of the spine, it's 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 not as good for uh, for 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 marrow as opposed to as opposed to cortical bone. So so in terms of evaluating marrow pathology um, or marrow infiltration or marrow edema, you know, M MRI really is the way to go. Now bear in mind what I'm what I'm talking about here is 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 uh, sort of your standard run of the mill CT and your standard run of run of the mill MRI. Um, you know, if you follow the, the literature closely or if you work in a department where they're using very high-end uh, scanners or high-end uh, technology, you know, some, some of the things I'm saying may not be entirely accurate because of the advances in technology. But, but broadly speaking, what I'm, for the purposes of this talk, I'm talking about the sort of technology that's, that's pretty much available to everyone. Um, so again, CT, uh, again, depicting... A cortical bone very well. You have some um, assessment, as you can see here, of the trabecular architecture of the bone. Um, for example, here you can see there's this infiltrative uh, lesion. And just for orientation, you guys probably know you have your vertebral bodies, you have your pedicles, you have your posterior elements, um, including your lamina, and you know the pars articularis uh, going down here, depending on the orientation of the of the CT. Um, what I wanted to show you here is that we can also take the data from the CT and actually use it for some very uh, useful applications. We can do uh, what's known as finite element modeling. Uh, you guys may be um, aware of, which, which allows us to, for example, compare uh, population data with an individual's data and look at things like um, stress-strain relationships across end plates. Um, and, uh, and, and there are various uh, software algorithms that are, that are becoming more and more available in terms of um, assisting your ability to, to, to decide uh, various characteristics of uh, pathology. So, so for example, to, to make an assessment of, um, of uh, whether a, a, uh, a, a, a vertebra with a, with a vertebral um, lesion, including a metastasis, is, is a stable or an unstable lesion. Uh, how, would, how would you guys typically, typically make that assessment now, do you think? Do you have any, do you have any sense of, of, how that's, of how that's done? Determining instability in the context of a spine metastasis or a spine neoplasm? How about the uh, SIN score? Exactly, exactly. The SIN score, which is very, which is very helpful. Um, but in, a, in addition, we can we can use uh, some of the software to to um, you know to contribute to to our decision making uh, in, in in terms of in terms of whether we think that a, a particular fracture is is likely to occur if it hasn't already, um, or whether you're likely to um, have additional kyphosis going forward and so on. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.